Hey guys, this is Chrissy O from the Chrissy O Show, and today I'm taking you guys on a wonderful tour of the Roundhouse Museum. So you gotta stay tuned right here on the Chrissy O Show. Okay, guys, we're here on the Chrissy O Show, and we're here with Mr. Bill Myers. So now we call this place the Roundhouse, but it has a more technical name. So tell us what the what it's really called. Thank you, and thanks for having me here. But the name of the place is the Oliver Nestus Freeman Roundhouse and African American Museum. Wonderful, and it's located here. We're located at 1202 Nash Street Southeast at the intersection of Hines and Nash Street in Wilson, North Carolina. Right here in downtown. Right here. That is awesome. So now explain to us a little bit about for, we're just going to call it the Roundhouse for short. Okay, sure. um, explain to us a little bit of the history behind the Roundhouse. All right. Well, the Roundhouse was built in 1946 by Mr. Oliver Nestor Freeman, who was a stonemason, a very prominent stonemason. Went to Tuskegee, graduated with a degree, and came back to Wilson and wanted to build homes for the GIs returning from World War II because of an acute shortage. So he wanted to build houses, and he, he had a dream of building a house made of glass. But I'm told that it was his wife who said, nobody wants to live in a glass house. So he started scrounging up materials. So the house is made of stone, bricks, rocks, and anything that he could scrounge up to make a house. And he made it a round house based on huts and things that he studied in Africa, where houses had no seams because they were round. So consequently, snakes could not get into the building. So he made this round house, and it was a three-room house. It had a living room, a bedroom, and a kitchen, and a bathroom. And people actually lived into the house. But it sat abandoned for, for years, over about two blocks from where it's located now. And we went to city council back in the year 2000 and requested that it be moved to this location to be made into an African-American museum. It wasn't not my original idea, it was three members of city council who brought up the idea, but I went there to say, amen, let's do this. And so they asked me about the money to finance the project, and I quickly told them that I had no, no money, but I thought it was a good idea, so I came to endorse the idea. So they put up a challenge. They said, show us at least $15,000 coming from your community, and, and then we'll give it some serious consideration. But lucky for us, the program was televised. And the very next day, the very next day, a lady came to my home and presented me with a check for $5,000, which was the uh, momentum that we needed to get the project started. Then Betty McCain, who was at that time Secretary of Cultural Resources for the state of North Carolina, said, I have about $25,000 in, in, in the library fund that's not being used, and I, I think it's such a wonderful project, I will put it toward that effort. So she gave us a check for $25,000. So we had raised over $30,000. I went back to city council and said, hey, we have the money. Let's get this project started. So that was the beginning. And uh, through other donations of a dollar, fifty dollars, twenty dollars, and they came from everywhere, from all people in town. It was truly a community effort. And in doing that, we were able to open the museum officially at the grand opening of the year uh, 2001, October 2001. Since that time, it's been a prominent uh, mainstay in our community. People have come from 42 different states in the United States and four foreign countries to see this little building, and we have put on display the history of African Americans because African Americans play such an important role in the development of this county, this city, this state. Yet it's not documented. It's not in the history book. So consequently, our kids don't know our history. And our OR seniors have forgotten that. So we wanted to put something up to say, hey, this is important. These people were important. These were the makers of this community, makers and shapers. So. Let's, let's honor these people by putting up a building here and putting the artifacts in, putting their pictures, their history, and all these things. So they stood there now uh, since 19, I'm sorry, since 2001. Well, some three years ago, we went back to city council and said, listen, we're getting so many historical artifacts that we need an additional building. So we went back and asked for permission to have a fundraiser. And we did that. 
And again, people were just so nice to us. And we were able to get some grants from, from places like the Tourism Board, uh, AT&T, uh, contributions from around the world again, and we're able to put in this magnificent building. Uh, and although we're not open yet, we are forward, looking forward to a grand opening sometime very, very soon. I am Gloria Freeman. I believe I'm a sixth generation Freeman, much to my privilege. I am the daughter of Charles Freeman Sr., who is the son of Julius Freeman Jr., who was the brother of Oliver Nestus Freeman. My grandfather Julius was a brick mason who taught masonry at our local high school, Darden High School. His brother Oliver was a stone mason whose work you see here on the grounds and all over Wilson. The more I travel through Wilson, the more I'm able to recognize his work. This is a signature um, type of architecture that he is known for, that he brought to Wilson and really all over the world, the country, in California, on the coast, uh, all over North Carolina, you'll be able to identify his work by the stone work and the mortar that he used. He and my grandfather were graduates of Tuskegee Institute at that time, uh, who uh, graduated under the presidency of Booker T. Washington who visited Wilson because of his relationship and acquaintance with the Freeman brothers and the Vicks and other prominent people here in uh, East Wilson. Um, they believed in independence, uh, doing for yourself. They didn't borrow, they didn't loan. Well, they did loan. Oliver was known for actually uh, allowing people to move into his houses that he built and own his property without down payments, without um, um, financing and that type of thing. He was really interested in helping people build and improve and establish East Wilson, which they were very much uh, instrumental in doing. So did you have um, any recollection or memory of him at all? And if you do, tell us what you remember. I was quite young when uh, he lived diagonal to this building that we're in now. I do remember his front yard was fabulous, fantastic. And since even in the last few days and weeks, I'm always meeting people who remember his yard. They remember the huge concrete figures that he had in his yard. There's a, there was a recent um, item in the Wilson Daily Times, a woman wrote about her recollection of the front yard at uh, Oliver Nestor's house. His wife um, raised animals, they had chinchillas, they had, he actually had bears, I think that's a common knowledge that most people realize, and you'll see that around here on the grounds but he had brown bass that he trained, and that was an attraction. And as you came into Wilson off of Nash Street, which unfortunately they got rid of when they brought Hind Street in here, it was a, it was a beautiful um, vi um, venue as you came into Wilson. And many of the children look forward to seeing the bears, seeing the dinosaur. Now for Nestus himself, uh, I remember he had a long white beard. His hair was white at the time that I knew him. Um, he was not a talkative man. He would uh, be seen around town. Sometimes he would have his bear on a chain and he would walk through town and obviously that is very hard to forget to see a man walking with two or three bears on, uh, on a chain. Um, but he was well thought of. People went to him for advice, for common sense. Uh, he would be uh, asked to come to the courthouse to sort of give his um, approval or um, recommendation for people who needed things or who had maybe gotten into a little bit of a, an issue over the weekend and they would sort of ask, do you know this man and what type of person is he? And he would give his, his references and people thought quite a lot of him. And you might imagine he was very well known because he was eccentric. He was unusual, he did unusual things. Uh, he had a very cultured wife who was uh, in her own right um, an important figure in the community. 
I say that she brought class to the family because she was actually employed as the assistant of Mrs. Booker T. Washington. And she knew all about dinner parties and how to dress and um, what was appropriate for this occasion and that occasion. And uh, we loved her as well. This is good for Wilson. You see, I think of Wilson as an arts community. And the things that are happening here downtown, the Whirly Gate Park, the Rose Garden, the Baseball Museum, all these things, the Botanical Gardens, and all these things that are happening in our city, which bring in tourist dollars. Tourism is a big industry, and we're so strategically located right here on the Interstate 95 that goes right through our county. And think about the thousands of cars that travel that road every day. Let's bring them into the city and see what we have to offer. We have so much to offer here with the wonderful Arts Council, the, the Edna Book and Cultural Center and all these kinds of things that people need to come and see. And once they do it, they'll, they'll have the opportunity to stay a little while and, and, and eat in our restaurants and shop in our stores. So it's good for the city. Like I said, this whole effort here was done by the community. When we tried to become an all-America city, this was one of the projects that put us over that hump. We became an all-America city. One of the reasons was because of the Oliver Nessus Freeman Roundhouse. And because it had been such a community effort, all of the citizens contributed to this, and we made it happen, and here we are today. And I think it's fabulous, and mm -hmm. I enjoy coming here. I bring my kids here, and I'm so excited for your new building, and I cannot wait to see all the cool stuff that uh, you guys have in store over here. I can't wait either. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm excited about it. It's going to be good for Wilson. It, it really is. very good, yeah. and we will make sure that everybody knows how to donate. Good. All right. right. Thank you, Mr. Bill Myers. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Bill Myers and Ms. Gloria Freeman from the Freeman family for coming out and speaking with us today. We had a wonderful time at the Roundhouse Museum, and you guys can go check them out, find out all about it at theroundhousemuseum.com. And don't forget, they have a free summer concert series, free to the public. So go check it out, see who's going to be there. Also, I'd like to encourage you guys to participate in their Brick Paver fundraiser. It's only $100, and you can find out more about that on the website, but your brick will be out there forever at this historical place. They will be in their newly constructed building very, very soon. And it's going to be filled full of artifacts, history, and educational pieces for all people near and far. You just got to come out and learn about all these really cool places that we have right here around us. So thank you for subscribing and following the Chrissy O Show. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell, that little icon, and we will see you guys real soon. Shop local, buy local, and support your neighbor.